All right, for um, these notes, we're going to continue on with exponential growth and decay models. Um, and here we're going to look at Newton's law of cooling um, or heating, depending on um, the temperature of the environment versus the temperature of whatever object you have. So this is um, the rate of change. of the temperature of an object is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of its surroundings. And this is a regular experience that you guys have if you um, take something cold out of the fridge and leave it on the counter um, and then come back later on in the day it's definitely going to have warmed up because typically the temperature of the room is warmer than the temperature in your refrigerator. So things like that, you've experienced this before. So if we relate this to um, the differential equation that we used before, then we would say the rate of change um, of the temperature of the object is going to be K, so whatever that constant is, multiplied by the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. So that's what the S equals. All right. So. I did not leave very much space here. I'm gonna write kind of small. Up here, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the temperature of the object. Um, well, once you plug T in, so T is the temperature of the object, but once you figure it out, this is um, gonna be the temperature with the surroundings influencing it. But S is the temperature of the surroundings. So if we think about this and we're trying to do what we've done before with separating um, the differential equations and um, solving, in this case we're going to solve for capital T instead of solving for Y because we don't have a Y in the problem, then I would multiply this over to the other side. So I would have 1 over capital T minus S dt equals K d lowercase t. And then I have to integrate both of those sides. And so at the integral of this, this is technically a u substitution problem because it's t minus s, not just t. Um, but s, since that's the temperature of the surroundings, that's a constant, that's not going to be changing. So this is all that's changing. And, um, and that doesn't have a derivative on its own. The derivative of capital T would just be one. So this is one where we can fudge it a little bit. We don't quite need to do U substitution there. So I can say the integral of this would be ln of T minus S equals, the integral of K would be KT plus C. And then if I'm gonna solve this, I'm gonna do E on each side. So that is T minus S equals E to the KT plus C, and then we'll do what we've typically done here. We'll say that's a constant times E to the KT, and then we'll isolate the T by adding the S to the other side. Now, um, if I want to figure out what the initial value is, so what I get when I plug zero in for t, and I'm gonna say this with zero plugged in is gonna be ce to the k times zero plus s. And so e to the k times zero, that would be e to the zero, which is just one. So that's t of zero equals c plus s. 
and so T minus S equals C. And so that tells us that our formula is gonna be the ending temperature is going to be the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature times E to the KT plus the surrounding temperature. And that's gonna be the formula that we will use when we do these problems. And that is because that is the general solution to the differential equation. All right, okay. So here we have a two liter bottle of soda that is at room temperature, so that's our S, and it is placed in a fridge. Actually, the two liter bottle is sitting there. That's our initial value then. Uh, placed in a fridge, that would be the surrounding temperature because that's what's gonna put an effect on it. After half an hour, the soda's temperature is 61 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the temperature after another half hour? How long does it take for the soda to cool to 50 degrees? So first, we're gonna go ahead and um, write down the information we have. So we have that the initial value is 70 degrees. We have the surroundings are 38 degrees. We have after half an hour, the soda's temperature is 61 degrees Fahrenheit, and so I'm going to go ahead and you can think about if you want to do this in terms of hours or minutes, it can go either way. So I'm going to go ahead and use one half for half of an hour, but that means that my answer is going to be in terms of hours. So I'm going to use the point um, one half and then 61 degrees. And this is going to help me, this information is going to help me solve for my K, that constant, kind of like what we did in the other video. So we're going to say y equals 70 minus 38 times e to the k, and then the time that we're using for this one, well, actually, it'd be kt plus uh, 38. And then if I want to go ahead and plug in my extra piece of information so that I can solve for my k value, I'll say that if I look at my time as half of an hour, then the temperature that I'll have then is 61 degrees. So I can go ahead and subtract that 38 over from 61. That gives me 23. Um, 70 minus 38, that's 32. And then I'm trying to solve for K, so I can go ahead and divide by 32. So 23 over 32 equals e to the 1 half k. And then for me to solve for k, I just need to ln each side. So ln of 23 over 32 equals 1 half k. And so for me to solve for k, I need to multiply by 2. So I have 2 times ln of 23 over 32 equals k. So the equation that I'm working with, um, you can use 70 minus 38. I think that's what I did in most of my answer keys. Or if you want to write 32, because that's what it simplifies to, that would probably make more sense. OK. So this right here is the equation that we are working with, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and answer the two questions that we have. The first question we have is what is the temperature after another half hour? So for me to solve that, I'm gonna say the temperature after another half hour is gonna be 70 minus 38, e to the two ln, 23 over 32 times half an hour plus 38. And if you plug that in, you find that that is approximately 54.531 degrees Fahrenheit. And you should be writing a sentence, but I don't know that I have enough room, so I will let that go for now. 
And then the um, other question we have is how long is it going to take for that soda to cool down and become 50 degrees? So now I'm going to go ahead and say 50 degrees equals the rest of this stuff here. You're going to find that a lot of these problems are fairly repetitive. So as long as you understand um, how the general solution came from the differential equation, like how that proportionality works, um, and kind of understand what you're doing, these problems are going to feel pretty easy because they're fairly repetitive. So we'll go ahead just like last time, like we did up here when we solved for k, we're going to subtract that 38 over to the other side, which is going to give us 12. That still is 32. And then we'll divide 32 over to the other side. So 12 over 32 equals E. And then for us to get the um, T isolated, we have to get rid of the E. So we're going to LN each side. So LN of 12 over 32 equals 2ln of 23 over 32 times t. And so t is going to be, we're going to divide that stuff over. So t is going to be ln of 12 over 32 divided by 2ln of 23 over 32. And that is. Since I did this in terms of hours, that's 1.485 hours. All right, let's go ahead um, and look at the next page. So here we're going to look at compound interest, and this should really um, this is more just stepping back into math three and doing stuff that you guys have already done before. So compound interest is the final amount is the principal times one plus the rate divided by the number of times it's compounded per year raised to the exponent of the number of times per year times the number of years. So P is the principal, R is the rate, N is the number of times compounded per year. And T is the number of years. And then we have um, another formula that we're going to say is for compounded continuously. And that's y equals pe to the rt. And so that, when you look at that, that's going to look real familiar to the ones that we were doing before in the other video where it was y equals ce to the kt, where this is that initial value. And this is that constant that it's changing by or that it's multiplying by. So here, um, the reason that you can use an e in this problem is because um, the limit as n goes to infinity. So we're talking about this n over here, the number of times you're compounding per year. If you're compounding continuously, then that's infinitely many times per year. Um, and the limit of this part of the equation right here is actually e to the rt. That's what the limit is. And so that's kind of a way of you being able to calculate this while plugging infinity in there since we don't actually have an infinity button we can plug in. Okay, so here for this problem it says um, you're investing $1,000 into a CD, which is a certificate of deposit account, for three years at 6% interest. We want to find the total money um, in the CD if the interest is compounded quarterly, yearly, quarterly, monthly, and continuously. So these three are going to use the compound interest formula. Yearly is going to be for n equals 1. Quarterly means 4, so 4 times per year, once per quarter. Monthly means that n is going to be 12. And then continuously means that we're going to use that other formula. 
So I'm going to say the final amount is the principal times 1 plus the rate is 6%, which we have to make sure we write as a decimal. So 6% divided by 1 time per year to the 1 uh, was for 3 years. So there's going to be our yearly. Our quarterly is going to be the same. We're just exchanging the 1 for a 4. And then the monthly is the same. We're just exchanging it for a 12 that time. All right, these are all dollar amounts. So I'm going to make sure to put the dollar sign in there. I've got 1,191 and 2 cents, 1,195 and 62 cents, 1,196 and 68 cents. And this time um, we are making an exception to our rounding policy. We normally round to three decimals. We're going to round to two since we're talking about money. And then we'll go ahead and do the compounded continuously formula. That was 06 times 3. And that gives you 1,197 and 22 cents. And you got plenty of space, so if you want to write a sentence, you could.